I want to talk right now about metalness and I want to talk about what I think are pretty big misconceptions that people actually have. It's a texture that separates whether something is a metal from something that is not that we also call a dielectric. Whichever substance you could imagine in real life will really be one of these two things. Uh, so I'm certainly not here to debate that at all. Uh, that's not what people will misunderstand about the metalness texture. Um, but if you were to ask anyone who does character art, maybe not anyone, but I would actually wager that the vast majority of people, this is what they actually think. They think of the metalness texture being something that has to be binary. It has to either be zero or it either has to be one, but it can't be any shades in between. And I'm here to tell you guys that I believe that this is wrong. Uh, if we are limiting ourselves to only zero or one values within our uh, metalness texture, I believe personally in a, a very humble way that we are committing a mistake there and that we are um, closing ourselves to a very big amount of variety that exists in the real world. But also, I think in a way we are kind of misunderstanding what a metalness texture even is. If we take a look at this little rock that's here. And I was to ask you guys, is this a metal or not? Not metal, but it it's metal at the same time. There's something like this. There's something like that, right? It's like, this is kind of metallic. I mean, clearly when we look at the way that the spec reacts with the surface, there is clearly a metallic, um, a metallic side to it. There's something metallic about it. But at the same time, uh, we would expect a metal to probably be more reflective than that. You know, like you can still kind of see the albedo. You, you can still kind of see what looks like uh, sort of a diffuse albedo-ish uh, color over the surface. It's not quite a metal, right? Like we are quite literally looking at a rock that is a fusion of minerals and iron. Uh, that's what this is. That's what ore is, you know, like when we think of people going out to mine stuff, to mine ore, whether it's gold ore, silver ore, iron ore, these sorts of things. They're mining rock, and within that rock is little microscopic little pieces of the actual metal that they are there to look for. So that's what ore is, and that's what this is. And because this is a mix of two different substances, if you think about it that way, this is simply uh, something that if we were to represent this with a metalness map, uh, we couldn't either put the value 0 or 1 to it because both values would be either uh, too much like a, a dielectric or it would be straight up a uh, metal. So none of these two extreme values really represents the complexity that we are looking at. Uh, here's another picture of that. You know, See, like you, you can see the little scintillating little pieces of uh, metal there that is sort of embedded within this particular rock. And the whole rock seems to shine a lot more than we would usually expect a rock to shine. Here's close-ups of ore where we can start to see the separation between the metal and, in this case, this is quartz, um, I believe. So these are little pieces of gold that are stuck within a matrix of quartz. And um, you can see at this particular zooming level, if you will, that uh, we have clear metallic parts and we have clear non-metallic parts. Now, you could be like, okay, but I'm kind of cheating here a little bit. I'm kind of stretching uh, things a little bit because you're like, yeah, but you know, like ultimately if you were to make a texture for this, you would make a part that's white and then the part that's black and then that's it. You know, you would still separate it out like that. You know, like, so, so you know, you could have that as an argument now, you know, like what do we do with this now? Um, but, uh, uh, you know, like, I think that reality is a bit more complex than that is, you know, because um, as we have seen in the case of ore, what happens is that the microscopic pieces of metal can be so small that they will literally become smaller than the pixels uh, of the texture that you are dealing with, right? So here's how I think of a uh, texture. This is a texture. So this is a texture that's 9 by 7 texture. It's a very weird one. 
but essentially every texel that we are looking at right now represents a specific area. It represents a specific size, right? It has a size that could be uh, measured. So the size of each pixel could be measured to a certain extent. You know, like it's not just one little punctual point in space. It has an area there. And so what happens is that often within the area that each pixel has or each uh, texel has, you know, you will probably in there find small little details and you'll find others that there is nothing much that is going on there, right? And um, so what happens is that um, each of these little texels, you know, because it is, it can have only one color given to it, the color has to represent the average of the smaller microscopic details that are included within that little area that it has. So in the case, now this is actually starting to look more like a roughness uh, texture. And this is actually where the word roughness even comes from. Or rather, um, if you look, there are certain engines where the roughness isn't actually called that, but where it's actually called the microsurface. Uh, I know that Marmoset 4 calls it like that. If you look in there, you'll find the term microsurface. If you're looking for roughness and you'll be like, well, what the hell is a microsurface? Well, the roughness texture that we use, a roughness represents uh, how bumpy and, and how uneven, how rough is the surface included within uh, each uh, texel that we have. And if that's true for roughness, it has to be true for every texture that we have. It's also true for a metalness texture. A uh, metalness texture is also representing the microscopic composition. Each texel represents the microscopic composition that is represented by the area of that particular uh, texel there. Let's take something else, okay? Let's take something else entirely. Let's take nail polish. Since we do characters, let's go for that. But it pretty much looks like the surface of a rock that we've seen before, right? This is what we call metallic nail uh, polish. So if you do character art, you will probably have come across something like this at some point, uh, if you don't wear some yourself. And um, that's the same thing, right? It's like, look at how small all these little flakes are in there. So metallic nail polish is the same thing. It's a combination of a non a metal, the paint itself, with little tiny little metallic flakes in there. That's what metallic nail polish is. So at the scale that we would care to texture this, this uh, is, we have to treat this as a composite material whose metalness varies uh, substantially over the surface and is probably neither white nor black, but some shade of gray in between. Let's say that you are in that metality of Okay, I still want to do this having parts that are pure white and parts that are pure black. And uh, because I'm convinced that, that this is still true, you know? Well, you know what's going to happen if you do that within a texture? Even if you do a really, really big texture, like you do a huge texture, you're like, okay, I'll do this as an AK texture and I'll just have pure white and pure black to represent the microscopic little elements in there and that's fantastic, you know? Well, you know what's going to happen the moment that you throw this in, inside a game engine? You know what's going to happen to your huge texture, all right? What the game engine will do is that it's going to take your texture, that's let's say an AK texture, and it's going to start to scale it down. And it's going to create duplicates of that uh, texture. It's going to get converted to a 4K, which is going to get converted to a 2K, to a 1K, and so on and so forth, which is what we call mitmaps. Uh, that's what happens. And you know, a video card does that, or rather a game engine does that, so that a video card uh, can always choose a resolution of texture that is closest to the resolution of pixels of your screen when displaying the uh, texture itself so that there is less visual noise that it has to deal with there. Uh, so those are MIP maps. And you know what happens to uh, a texture that is only black and white uh, as it gets MIP mapped? This happens to it. It gets, con it gets converted to gray. Here's another example of that. Same thing. Throw a black and white texture in the game engine, and the game engine, as it mip maps, as you zoom out, the uh, texture that was black and white will get converted to gray. So it's okay to have gray values in your 
metalness, and in fact, every game engine will turn your black and white texture to gray at a certain distance. All right, here's more examples. So here we can see a really beautiful close-up of those flakes that I have mentioned before. So this is, again, metallic paint. And the metallic in metallic paint comes from these little flakes that we have that are embedded within the paint there. This is the character Crunch from uh, Paragon. And if you take a look at the chest and the metallic car paint that he's got there, let me switch over to the metalness buffer. See how it's gray in there? All right, but it's not just metallic paint. What else uh, exhibits this kind of grayish color in the metalness map? How about, how about rust? What about rust? Now, something that has rusted all the way through is commonly not considered a metal anymore, even though its chemical composition is uh, iron and oxygen. Um, it's not considered a metal anymore for uh, reflection purposes because it doesn't behave like that. It behaves like a uh, dielectric there. But so we have a curious case of a metal which turns to a non-metal as it oxidizes, uh, being exposed to air there. This happens. And so what happens? Well, there is a transition when we start to zoom in on here, right? We go from this pure metallic part here to a part here that is a pure non-metal, even though chemically speaking, it is still mostly uh, metal there. But we can see a beautiful transition from the metallic part to the rusted part there and there too there are specs where the rust you know in your metalness map you would probably put these relatively black um, but we can also see that there's a, a nice smooth gradient that kind of happens there of rust you know because probably that at a even more microscopic level um, we would probably see uh, perhaps more noise there between what is metal and not you know i'm not sure like if we were to look at rust under a microscope it would actually look like but clearly at this scale there is a clear and very gradual very smooth blend of the rusted part within the non-rusted part there and so once more we would have to represent this whole gradient here uh with uh, a gray value within our metalness map Uh, this is not the only metal that exhibits this kind of effect there. In fact, anything, uh, pretty much any metal that is untreated will often, um, at the contact of air, start to oxidize. Here's another case of a metal that is turning, you know, so you can see that it's clearly becoming oxidized uh, and it's developing this beautiful uh, verdigris uh, patina over the surface, but it's, you know, in places it's not quite transformed yet, right? And so here too, we can see that it's kind of still kind of in between. There is a patina, but uh, there is a, a sort of the effect of oxidation that is visible there, but it's not fully transformed yet. It's kind of in between those two states there, right? A bunch of silver forks showing different degrees of oxidation. And uh, this could be fully white, and this could be kind of fully black in our metals map, but everything in between has to be a shade of gray. Look at this one here. This is really beautiful. This is a uh, tarnished silver. And there's this beautiful color that is forming over the surface, which uh, once more, as we have said, I'm repeating myself now, but you guys know where I'm going with this. This would neither be white nor black in our metalist map. The takeaway message here is that there is a lot to gain into the textures that we do for our own characters or for whatever it is that we texture by doing this kind of very deep research of particular materials and how do materials react with time? How do they change with time? How does a material weather? How does a material look like it's when it's damaged? Uh, is the damaged state the same as the weathered state? It probably isn't. And uh, doing like all this very, very deep research yields a lot of very important and interesting information that we can then afterwards think of applying onto our own characters there.